Be sure to visit homeworthy.com slash shop to discover amazing furniture, art, and accessories handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on this channel. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi Homeworthy, I am Clara. Welcome to my Upper West Side apartment. I am so excited to show you around. I'm Claire Sullivan. We are here in my New York City apartment. I am a content creator and interior designer. I live here with my husband and my two dogs, Puffin and Chowder. Puffin and Chowder are both Shih Tzus. I rescued Puffin about six years ago, and when I got him, he was black and white, and I was like, what am I gonna name this dog? Like, I looked down, and he was just so cute and looking at me like a little Puffin, like he just looked like a Puffin. So he became Puffin because I'm from Maine, and then I wanted a name for Chowder that would kind of go alongside Puffin, so I had my followers take a vote. And I think it was between Moby and Chowder, and we went with Chowder because they selected it. So we got this apartment in 2019. We wanted a place in the Upper West Side that was close to the trains, and we really liked the Lincoln Center neighborhood for obviously like the opera and all of the culture, and it's just super accessible and great restaurants, and we just love the neighborhood. When I first walked into the apartment, the first thing that I saw was the large row of windows that kind of lines the living room area. I had never seen anything like it in New York. And I just knew like from the second we walked in, this was the place. I didn't even have to look around. It could have been a pit and I would have been like, this is it, this is it. Um, and luckily it wasn't a pit. We had to do a lot of work, but it ended up being, I think just right for us. I used to work for a really high end design firm and it always used to bother me that I'd be seeing all these beautiful things all the time. And I was like, I want that in my apartment, but I can't, that's totally inaccessible. So I kind of started just figuring out ways that I could make my apartment feel luxurious and similar to kind of the really high end designers that you're gonna see um, in Architectural Digest and House Beautiful. So I kind of took it upon myself to start investigating that and coming up with little tips and tricks to create a beautiful home on a budget because I think everyone should have access to a beautiful home that feels just like them, but also has those little luxury touches that makes it feel collected and curated and designed. So here we are in my little entryway, just walking into my apartment. I think an entryway is a really important place to start like your design and start your vibe because it's the first thing you're gonna see when you walk into the apartment. So I like mine to be really colorful and interesting and very me. Um, so here I have a lot of art. There is no shortage of art. And so I love to just like throw stuff on the walls. I kind of carry you in here with this diagonal sort of line through. I have my nautical stuff. Um, I have my Matisse. We love Matisse. Um, and most of my art is thrifted or very cheap, very affordable. I have a little tray where you can put keys. I like to have some kind of floral arrangement or greens when you walk in, just to kind of invite you in, make you feel at home. The bamboo thing was from a flea market in Maine, which there is one flea market in Maine that probably like 50% of my stuff is from. It's the Arundel Flea in Kenny Bunkport if you ever get up there. So I love rattan, I love bamboo. It's definitely a little bit grandma, but if you pair it with the right things, with bright colors, it's not gonna feel like that kind of 80s rattan, Miami beach house type vibe. Oh, look at him. Chody, stop it. Oh my God, see, look at that. He likes to eat my furniture. He has very good taste. <laughs> So my door, I had a dream one night, and this is so bad, but this is what happens to me. I had a dream that I had a painted door, and I was like, oh, okay, I guess I need a painted door because it was a really good dream. So I decided to paint the door in stripes, and I was kind of debating. I wanted to do a really bright paint color, but then because my space is so small and interconnected, and you can really see everything from everywhere, so you need to make sure that you're pulling in tones that are repeated throughout the space. So I pulled in my bedroom color because it's it's Benjamin Moore Iceberg. So it's a kind of warm blue. It's not really, it kind of looks like a gray out of context. So it's a really subtle tone. Um, and because I was doing a bold stripe, I wanted it to be a little more on the subtle side. And yeah, it was really fun. Um, I ended up carrying it through very impulsively to the trim. And then I added this molding from Amazon. It's just stick on. Um, and so I carried it through that way just to add a little bit more color in here and interest. Here we kind of have this open area, definitely not a big space, but it is what I would call a dead space. It's an area where there's not much functional use besides walking. And that's why I decided to put this entryway table here. It's a kind of table that you see in like 
big houses in the entryway, but I thought, you know what, just because my apartment's small doesn't mean I can't have a fabulous entryway table. So I got this table, just it was just some kind of cheap find on Amazon. Um, and then this beautiful tablecloth is by my aunt's company, Mary Marshmallow. And the fun thing about this table is that if you're like me and you have a lot of stuff that you like to decorate and switch up all the time, like I just love arranging stuff, I love kind of switching things around, it's a great place for that. So taking all of your favorite things and kind of putting them on this table, it's a little bit of an organized chaos. I create a little grid of books, um, books that you think are pretty, books that you think are funny. I just think this book is hilarious. I don't understand it. I just think it's ironic because we love women. Um, and I think it's funny. I like little things that make people talk. I like things that are a little more interesting, make people go, what? I think that's a fun way to decorate. My style is eclectic. It's bright. Um, some would say preppy. Um, I don't really know how to describe it. Some people say grand millennial. I use a lot of blues, it's my favorite color, and I love like neutral tones and wickers, natural textures, and also kind of combining that with really bright pops of pink and green and blue and pastel colors. So I think it's really fun and happy and artistic, um, and I just, I like to feel uplifted in my home, not brought down by dark tones, and so yeah, I really like my bright colors. It's always great to put a really big arrangement, so a, a great place for an arrangement that has a lot of height, because there's kind of nothing around it, like it's, you know, it's not obstructing the eye in any way. This area is actually my desk and it's very dressed up right now for you guys. And it's kind of what it looks like when I'm entertaining. So underneath here is just my regular desk where I do my work. If you get a great tablecloth that you love, bring it out when you're entertaining. And it kind of transforms into a serving space or a bar, something like that. Really fun. I just lay out glasses that I love and just create just a little space, like a little vignette. I love vignettes. These were a find, thrifted find, as is like all of my art. This was one of, I think, like two splurges, I would say, in my apartment. Um, custom framing is crazy expensive, but sometimes it can be worth it. This was my first project, and I was so excited about it that I wanted it to be framed and up on my wall um, as kind of like a you did it, good job kind of thing that I can look at every day um, and just be proud of myself. I love bamboo. I love bamboo gold frames. It was Cynthia from Collins Interiors, who I'm obsessed with saying that if you group things together that are similar, it has a much greater impact than spreading them throughout the house. And that stuck with me. And I think I've just been kind of like having that in the back of my head as I've been decorating. So I grouped all of these gold bamboo frames together instead of bringing this somewhere else. And something about it is so impactful and creates like such an impression. And I really love that. So the apartment was built in the 1960s and we found it in 2020. Um, and it took about eight months to renovate. We touched it up. Um, we didn't have to do much besides the kitchen and bath. The rest was mostly just cosmetic. These floors were here. And really what I did was fill it up with myself. I feel like everything in here is just me. I love color. I love layering textures and patterns, but also keeping a lot of brightness and lightness is kind of my style. So it's a little bit of fresh. It's a little bit eclectic. And everything is on a budget. So the only thing I splurged on was my bedding pretty much. So you'll notice like I do a lot of little hacks, a lot of little things that make this feel a lot more luxury, I think, than it really cost. So we are now in my really kind of comfy living room area. My living room is divided into two sections um, because when we moved in, we realized we had this really large horizontal area. So we ended up dividing it into two spaces. One is fully functional. I sit here every night. We were watching The Crown last night. So cozy, um, I love it in here. I think a sectional is really important if you are furnishing your living room or a place that you wanna be reclining and comfy. I love a sectional um, and I love a white sectional. Even though we have dogs, I don't really care. It's filthy, don't look too close. <laughs> well, if we were to have a dinner party, which we do and we actually do this, this becomes our dining room table. So just like the desk is kind of multifunctional, again, this is small space living here. We pull the tablecloth off, that's our desk. We pull the tablecloth off or, and take the stuff off and it becomes our dining table. And then we have these kind of occasional chairs that are really dining, dining chairs. And we have two more that we tuck away in our closet. They're great because they're actually comfortable. I think they're very attractive. They are dining chairs. I think it's important when you're living in a small space to choose furniture that can be really multifunctional. Funny story on the window treatments, they're actually my first major mess up. Um, probably my first like design experience that was really a learning lesson. As you can see, they are not sized right. Um, so it was one of my first times like taking real measurements for something to be custom made and I just completely messed it up. I don't know what I did, but basically the fabric is hand block printed in India. It's beautiful fabric. 
Um, it's from my aunt's line, Mary Marshmallow, and she had some surplus fabric that I was like, I'm taking this. So I kind of kidnapped the fabric from Florida and had it custom made into these Roman shades. Um, and I love them. Because this area is so expansive and big, I wanted something that was gonna feel like a moment. I wanted it to feel like artwork. I did not want just like white curtains that was gonna wash this area out because it's, we don't have a lot of wall space in this area because of the window. So you want something really interesting and beautiful to look at. So the Roman shades, um, they pull down at night and they create these beautiful panels that to me, it's almost like art. Because they're sheer, that wasn't an issue. They're, it's fine to be sheer, but I did want the privacy of them. So the Roman shade is a really good option and they're really easy to bring up and down. I would say if it's one of your first custom fabric projects, I think this is a good way to go. I think everyone should have them. They're just so pretty and easy. And this area is, I like to think of it more of a conversation area. Um, if I have friends over because of the setup of the room, it's really easy to sit and talk and chat and like have appetizers, have drinks. My husband and I sit here and catch up like when he comes home from work. If we're going out, we'll have a cocktail here before together. And I just love a room that's kind of set up for conversation versus entertainment and watching TV because it's not something that you find a lot anymore. Usually rooms are especially living rooms are designed around the TV. And so I wanted a space that was gonna be designed around conversation and connection. My pink couch has been in my family for years. I think my mom got it probably in the 90s. It was this brand called Main Cottage Furniture. She came to college parties with me. She came to the East Village with me. She came Upper East Side with me. I mean, she's been everywhere. I love her so much and I'm telling you she's so comfortable like they don't make couches that are this comfortable anymore. It's also really hard to find a bench seat um, so it makes for a really good place for guests to just crash on this. My brother slept on this couch so many times at our old apartment. Um, yeah and so basically when I was thinking about this space I knew the pink couch could not go. I will never get rid of her. So I started pulling colors from the pink couch with the pillows. This is my little pillow line and just pulling in really fun colors and then kind of trying to connect it with the blue that's found throughout the rest of the space. So tying in blues and pinks and then kind of capping it off with little punches of green. So this is my needlepoint pillow. It says, been shopping for years and still have nothing to wear, which is just like me. I just love like old school needlepoint pillows. I feel like they just, they say so much about you. This wall has been like the Odyssey and I am Odysseus. Um, it is just the never ending journey. It started as a beautiful white wall and then I put wallpaper up and then I couldn't stand the wallpaper and then I painted it green and then I couldn't stand the green and I settled on this. And this is our final thing. We are not changing it. One, I promised my husband I'm never changing it again because he's fed up with me, but also because I like it. I think it looks really good. I ended up doing a, a horizontal stripe. I wanted to emphasize the horizontal nature of the room and kind of make it appear more expansive because our wall of windows is so long this way. This area was feeling a little bit cramped and I wanted to find a way that would kind of stretch it out and make it feel, make it appear visually bigger. Um, so yeah, we, we ended up using a ton of painter's tape, rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls. Um, and it was very painstaking. I'm not gonna say this was easy, but I will say it was worth it. And it kind of packs a punch. Feels a little bit like wallpaper, but a little bit like something else. And I think, it ties the apartment together really well with all the different tones of blue. I collect these little sailor's boxes. I love just how unique they all are um, and just adorned with shells. You can find these at thrift stores. They're usually $10. You should never pay more than like $12 for one. Um, but I love collecting things and I love kind of grouping them together and giving that little like interesting kind of feel and eclectic feel. Um, yeah, and then I just kind of decorate with whatever I have. My friend got me these napkins, which I think were very me. So cute, we have hair of the dog, just a sippo from a hippo. Okay, so the green elephant, I'm in love with Mr. Elephant. I saw him at an auction in Maine a few years ago and it was kind of, I think it was in September. And I told my parents, oh my God, I want that elephant. Like, I love that elephant. I hadn't seen one that looked like this in this color. And they're so cute. They remember that I wanted the elephant and my dad surprised me with it on my birthday which was so sweet. He loves antiques, I love antiques, and I feel like that's where we really bond. Um, so a bunch of this stuff is stuff that he's bought and then kind of put it in storage, and then I found it again and kind of resurfaced it. Um, I don't know, I, I think antiques are a really great way to connect with your family and friends who love them. It's just kind of like an unspoken thing that you both love. This table is another piece that has just, I think my mom got it probably in the 80s or 90s, um, and it's the same brand as, as this, it's Main Cottage. It is so dinged up. But the shape of it and how narrow it is, is just so perfect for a New York apartment. 
and I've had it for years and I'll never get rid of it because I think the size is amazing. And I kind of like that it's dinged up. I mean, I really don't mind that. I think it kind of adds character, so. So I really wanted a serving bar that felt very fancy, but they were also expensive. So I was like, what can I do to make a bar feel really custom to me on a budget? Um, so you can order these cane sheets on Amazon or anywhere, and then you just buy a cheap piece of furniture, very low cost, and you stick it behind with a staple gun. And what you can do is open it up, and I actually installed lights, and I have this little remote control, um, and so you can turn it on, and then you get this kind of illuminated party bar, um, which has been quite the hit at parties, and just, I have so much fun styling it. I've been big on the espresso martinis lately, so this is my little espresso martini shelf. I have my coffee maker in here where I can make my espresso, and then we have our fancy cups for those. Um, yeah, and we just have a bunch of fun with it. And it's a good way to kind of shut everything away because sometimes bot bottles are a little bit unsightly, so it's nice to be able to shut the door on them, but also have the light come through and you're able to conceal, but also have this kind of visually interesting little caning, which looks really expensive and custom. So this is my kitchen. This was the really major renovation part of the project. Um, the kitchen was from 1960 and it was all closed off. So this area right here was a doorway and it was closed off with a door. Then your wall continued around here to here to the end. So there was really no kind of openings. There was no way to get in and out. And I wanted to kind of honor the time period that the apartment was built in. So I didn't want to take all of the walls down because I really felt that it was important to have a kitchen that felt semi removed from the rest of the space because it is a smaller space. Um, so we ended up doing this half wall here which will add room for just two seats for me and my husband, um, our little breakfast bar. And I always say like, oh, it's gonna be so perfect for dinner. And then of course, we never eat here. We always sit on the couch and watch a movie and eat, which I'm sure a lot of you do too. It used to have a wall oven where the fridge is. The oven was the coolest thing. Like, it, it, I was sad to see it go, but it was non-functioning. It was probably from like 1950, but it was really cool to see. Um, so the oven was here. We ended up changing the location of everything just so that we had everything really accessible. So we had sink, dishwasher, trash, oven, and fridge. So I can basically just cook like this, um, which is the beauty of a small kitchen, I guess. So this tile, when we started the project, this was the one thing that I knew I wanted herringbone tile. It's something I've always dreamed of. I think it's so beautiful um, and special and it's a little bit glamorous um, and you don't see it every day. So this was something I really knew I wanted was a marble backsplash using herringbone. Um, and so I really loved how that came out. And then we just used a white quartz that was gonna be really easy to wipe down and clean and adds brightness because it is kind of open to the rest of the space. I didn't want anything too bold or dramatic that was gonna kind of distract the eye. I wanted it all to blend together. I don't keep it too tidy and clean every day. I mean, you are walking in on a good day. I cleaned for you. I'll show, oh, I will show you. I like organizing and organizing is kind of my job on TikTok. So I'll show you, this is my pasta cabinet. And this is my pride and joy. It is where I keep all my pasta because I don't really cook that often. We go out to dinner way too much, but if I am gonna cook, I definitely am making pasta. So I decided I was gonna dedicate one cabinet to just pasta things. So I have these beautiful pastas that I found at the grocery store. We have um, different kinds down here, and then I keep the sauces here. It excites me every time I open this up, and I am such a freak about design that I like even the insides to look really good and pretty and fun. I love hostessing. I love just like making people feel good. It's like my number one, I think, passion in life besides TikToking. Um, so I love to get these little, well, so I love, I love to make these beautiful cookies for people. Just kidding. I did not make them, <laughs> but I had them made for you for coming to visit my home. I'm so excited that you're here. These are so cute. <laughs> okay, so these are from a company in Florida and it's called Southern Home Bakery. And oh yeah, they're based out of Orlando, but you can order them from anywhere in the United States and she ships them like very quickly and you can get anyone's logo on it. You can get anything custom made. I got them with my logo on it. I thought it was the funnest thing in the world. Um, yeah, so cute, and their package is so cute. I think it's really important to make people feel welcome, especially when they're coming into your home. So whenever someone's coming over, I try to do a little something just to make them feel welcomed and happy and comfortable in here because it's my favorite place to be. I want everyone to feel the same way. Because we're in Manhattan and storage is an issue, I have a lot of accessories and stuff for my dogs that I needed a spot for, so I found this little thing and what I like about it is the design is very simplistic very modern minimal and I usually I don't like minimal but I wanted it to blend in with the rest of my kitchen and the cool thing about this is that it rotates out 
And this is where I store all of the stuff for my dogs. It's kind of a mess, but basically I have their little coats hooked onto command strips here that I just grab for them when they need it. Um, and yeah, and then you can kind of just tuck it away. So if you are having a space issue, I recommend something like this on wheels that you can kind of rotate in and out and it kind of just hides. It kind of is concealed with all the white. This is my little Hermes poop bag carrier because everyone needs a glamorous poop bag holder, right? And I love it. It basically hinges on here. And so you really have the nice hardware and everything because they are just as fancy as me. They're actually more fancy than me because I would never have this. Um, yeah, look you. <laughs> so I'm just gonna be putting together some roses and um, we were laughing because this is my little tape trick and it's actually been through the dishwasher like this. So I kind of lay out the tape and kind of put it over the vase so that I can support the flowers. And then I just threw it in the dishwasher. I kind of forgot the tape was on it and it came out like this. So it's a trick that lasts. So very exciting. Um, yeah, so when I have roses, I like to cut them lower rather than higher. I take all the leaves off. Um, you wanna make sure that they're cut at a 45 degree angle. It helps them soak up the water and stay fresh for longer. I'm constantly arranging flowers on TikTok. It is my favorite thing to do. Yeah, you can definitely get roses at your local grocery store and they are way less expensive than going to like a high-end florist. Okay, so right now what I'm doing, it's actually, it sounds very fancy, it's called European hand arranging, but essentially what I'm doing is laying one on top of the other so it creates this kind of spiral in the center so that it'll fall really nicely within the vase. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of, I always use the edge of the countertop and I do this, I wanna see where they're gonna fall within the vase. So I kind of want them to be pretty low today. Um, I think when you arrange your roses low, it makes them feel a lot fuller rather than when they're really high, they just feel a little bit too stringy, if that makes sense. So I like to keep them kind of low. And then this little twist here should keep them pretty secure um, and it really helps to have the little tape in the middle. Um, so now I'm just gonna trim them at this height here. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna remember where they are, kind of around here. So then I'm gonna trim them all at a 45 degree angle. This is so funny, this is what my content just is in general. So again, to show you that European hand arranging, you put one here, and then you just kind of keep layering on top diagonally to create a shape that looks like this, and then it'll create a little whirlwind effect that looks really pretty inside of your vase. And you can kind of see they're creating this little bouquet effect just naturally, which is really nice. And you're just gonna tuck it in to your little hole in the center with the tape, and you're kind of let it in, like this, pat them down, get them all in there. So then you just have your little squat arrangement that feels really full and luscious, even though it's just a dozen roses. Here we are in my bedroom where I have everything blue. I wanted my bedroom to feel very me and my favorite color is blue. So like I said, this is where I splurged. I think something about these custom monogram pillows is just like so luxury. You always see it in those really fancy homes on the Homeworthy channel, I'm sure. And so these are from Etsy and they were hand embroidered in India. You can pick your color, you can pick your initials, and I am just obsessed. I think they just tie everything together. They make it feel so fancy and fun. Yeah, it's a king size bed. Um, so you wanna make sure that your pillows are really like full and, and supple. I hate that word, but like you wanna make sure that your pillows are really filling up your bed. I use two king size kind of standard pillows behind. And then when it comes to a king, if you have a queen, you don't need to do this and it probably won't fit. Um, you're gonna wanna do three Euro shams with your king, and that way it feels really full and fancy and kind of extra. Um, and then doing a couple throw pillows in front just to add a little something something. So this color on the wall is Benjamin Moore Iceberg. It's definitely my go-to blue because it's almost bordering on a neutral. I feel like when it comes to picking out colors, it's really easy to be like, go for the really saturated fun ones. But I think picking colors that are basically an off gray or an off-white is what you really wanna do. So this is kind of an off-blue Benjamin Moore Iceberg. I ended up ordering these molding pieces from Amazon and just painting them the same color and then you just stick them on the wall with command strips and you get this kind of like fancy molding look. So all of these images are from the public domain and that essentially means that they're really, really affordable. You just go on Google and you type in public domain artwork and then whatever you want. Maybe you want like a vintage tiger, vintage tiger or botanical drawing. 
um, and up will pop different libraries of public domain images, which means they're copyright free and anyone can download them and anyone can have access to them. So you download your image and then just get it printed. I get mine printed at FedEx. And I think for all of these, it was just $3. Um, very, very affordable way to get really fun artwork that feels like just like what you want. You are just the best widow boy in the world, yeah. This bureau, my parents had hand painted for me by like a family friend when I was a baby. And so it was in my room as a baby. And then kind of like the pink couch, it came with me to my first apartment in New York and just stayed with me ever since. Um, so she has seen the best of times, the worst of times. Um, she looks like a little baby chest, but I can't get rid of her. Um, and now she's housing all of my husband's um, boxers and, and socks, and I think that's hilarious. Um, so I love her. She's you know exquisite, and one day hopefully we'll have a kid, and it'll go in the kid's nursery. So this wall here is my little gallery wall. I have a million gallery walls throughout this apartment. Um, and this one is really fun because this is my frame TV. I decided to build off of it to create a look that didn't really feel like a TV. I never had a TV in my bedroom growing up and I always felt like it was kind of a bad thing, kind of a guilty thing, a little guilty pleasure. So I wanted to conceal it a little bit. So I added in a bunch of just my artwork um, and printed it out from FedEx, so cheap, like everything in this apartment, super budget. Um, and then just got the frames on Amazon, created this kind of vignette over here. Here, I like having this console table underneath. I like to hide my cords as best as I can. So what I did here was I have all of my kind of blue and white stuff here, and I have this pot, and I ended up putting the cord, I kind of hid the cord inside of the pot, and I think if you have access to a pot, there you go. This is Target, very, very, very cheap, um, but you know, kind of has that elevated look, um, kind of like that Burlwood look. This is just a piece that I got in Palm Beach. Um, really cute Italian. I love lettuce wear. I hadn't seen that color, um, so I had to spring on that. Um, and then I just, I love blue and white chinoiserie. Um, big fan of that. And I like to put it all together to create kind of the biggest pop and yeah. I really love symmetry. And again, when you're talking about doing things on a budget, like easy ways to make things feel well designed is to focus on symmetry. So this is all extremely cheap stuff. And I took these two kind of column dressers and put them on either side of the window to create a symmetrical feeling. And then this dresser was just a hand-me-down from my friend who's also a designer and it came from Atlanta. Beautiful piece. Um, that's the thing. I feel like when you're friends with designers and people that are into artwork, it's good to just kind of switch off your stuff because you get sick of things. Someone else is gonna like it and appreciate it if it's a good quality item. And then this is our little like wedding shrine. I felt like I needed a little place to put all the stuff from our wedding. I'm still wanna like relive it every single day. So we have our little chest here, which is so beautiful and has our new initials on it. And then I just, I feel like if you've gotten married or you're excited to get married, you understand this. Like you just wanna keep reliving it and preserving all your stuff and showing it off and this trunk is really nice because you can shut it or you can kind of have it out on display. So welcome to the smallest room in my apartment, but also my favorite room. This is my bathroom. And when we were designing the space, I knew that I wanted this room to just feel like my zen escape. I wanted it to feel like I was in a spa. I wanted it to be like the most relaxing room in the whole world. And I really achieved that. It's my favorite place in the world. Like I would rather be here than out at a bar, restaurant, whatever. This is my safe space. Essentially, this was the second largest project that we had to work on in the apartment. Um, we ended up having to take out, the, there was a really old tub. There was a very strange little built-in wall trash can that was fully non-functional. I don't know, I think it's like a thing in, in these apartments. So we took that out. So I love the look of a slab shower where it's just one big block of marble. I think that's so fancy. And I wanted to achieve a look like that, but on a budget. So what we did was these marble tiles, they are Carrera marble and they are really large scale. So they kind of achieve a look that feels a little bit like that, um, but of course at a fraction of the price. And this room has just become my Zen room, I love it. Um, we did a classic basket weave on the floor. I really wanted something that was gonna feel old and kind of um, in reference to the age of the space, but also just feel classic and timeless. For this one, I wanted something that felt a little bit more glamorous, a little more feminine, refined, so I went with a um, polished nickel, and I'm really happy I did that because I have brass in a lot of areas of my house, but this feels very fancy and unique to my bathroom, and I'm really happy I made that decision. 
My favorite thing about this apartment is the expanse of windows that kind of lines the living room area. When I walked in, I was like, what is, like, it is absolutely, you don't see that a lot. Um, and so that's why I really wanted to spring on this apartment. It really elongates the sitting area um, and it's just really special. To me, the word home means safety. It means being enveloped by all of your favorite things, your favorite decor, your favorite people. I feel like the world can be really harsh and especially now it's really important to create an environment where you feel safe and supported and loved. And I think you can do that with decor by pulling in things that really feel like you and that make you feel special. Thanks for watching. For more home-worthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.